This is Prophet Evangelist Pastor David Woods, and I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus is his name. And I'm with you tonight to talk to you about a very important word for your life, understanding the power that's behind the law of honor. The following program has been paid in part by underwriters, sponsors, and partners just like you in this listening area. Please contact this. In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States, breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip, broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith on the all-new Pray America Live. Here's Midnight's Radio Pastor, David Wood. And welcome, everybody. This is Pastor Evangelist Prophet David Woods, and I'm excited to be with you today. It is cold outside, 25 degrees last time I looked, and (laughs) we are under blizzard conditions. And I'm not just saying that euphemistically. I'm talking about for real. We are having a blizzard here. And I guess what constitutes a blizzard is snow and wind together. Is that right? And uh, it's snowing sideways. That's right. Or, you know, you got small backyard. So I got all these little mini tornadoes going on, snow blowing everywhere, drifts up to the kneecaps and, and no end in sight. I guess Sunday's supposed to rain and wash it all away, but never fear. The Lord is here. That's right. I've got my, uh, I've got my orange tea. That's right. It uh, keep me warm tonight. I, I got the window open a little bit. It might be a little too much. I just got it cracked open, Terry. And that wind is just coming right through. And uh, just get ready, Kentucky and Michigan. You better you better buckle up because this storm is intense, bringing ice and snow. And I told you before, anything hits Washington and Oregon, comes straight for Kentucky. And then where it goes from there is anybody's guess, usually straight up to Michigan and just dumps on you. Eh, it gets to you, Tammy, first in Iowa. That's what happens. It gets to Iowa. That's right. You're getting our... <laughs> Tammy's getting nailed with all this snow we got, what, yesterday? Or wherever it came from. I don't know. It comes from Canada. It comes from... Come, you know where it comes from. Anyways, we're going to have a good time tonight. The law of honor. And some of you have never heard of that before. Let me just warm up a little bit. Let me warm my voice up. You know what they said? Uh, the great singer. Who was the great singer that could, that could hit the high notes? I mean, remember... In the 80s and, and 90s, she she sang so high that it broke shattered glass. Well, not really, but Sandy Patty, that's it. Now, I don't know if this is true. This might be a rumor. I hope it's not a rumor, uh, but I, I heard some pretty from pretty credible source that there's a secret to clearing your voice up before you go on the air or go on the radio or go on television or go in front of people to sing. And... Uh, and it's uh, Lay's potato chips. Just just one small little bag of Lay's potato chip. They said that oil just coats your throat. That's not all it coats. <laughs> so I thank God I don't have to do that. But I got my little orange tea in my Harrods cup. Have you ever been to Harrods Mall? This is trivial. This is the, the, the thing that makes people great in radio. And maybe you don't know this. Is that I used to, when I first started years ago, 30 some years ago, I read a script. On today's news, and it would come off a little, I hate to say it because it makes me sound real old, you know, but I do remember Hee Haw and Lawrence Welk, so I guess I am old. 
you'd hear it in the background. And there's a big machine. I forget what it was, Telex or something like that. And uh, you would go through there with a pen and it would, <laughs> a big machine, <laughs> you could hear it in the background in the newsroom sometimes. And uh, that's where I first started. The very first thing I started out on, reading the news. And um, it was one of my classes. Ted Sossman was my professor. God bless him, he's still living. I think he's in Texas or Florida somewhere. And uh, I was in Miami and I, I was using the restroom and I looked up, there was a thing, engineer signed by Ted Sossman. I came, I said to the manager, I said, y'all know Ted Sossman? They said, yeah, yeah, he signed off on documents for the station. I said, what? I said, that's my old radio professor in, in school. And uh, it was kind of neat to see, but yes, I had to read off the ticker, ticker feed and you would circle, you'd circle, or you, if you were real fancy, you'd highlight the news. You don't, don't want to read this. You want, don't want to read that. You want to read about this. This is sports and leave that for Billy Bob over there in the corner. He can do sports, but I'm going to take these. And, and we had cart machines, you know, you get ready one to push the cup on today's new and you go redo it and stuff. You didn't have a lot of editing. You'd redo it. You'd reread it. And then, and then years later, I learned that the most successful radio personalities have conversational skills. They talk to people and I can almost hear you talk back. <laughs> I can almost hear you talk back. And, uh, I know one, one of the most famous, most popular radio personalities has a headset or earphones now, I guess. And, uh, he has a, a person on the other side of the glass who actually does talk back and it helps in the conversational skills. That that's what makes great radio. Why am I talking about that? I don't know. Anyways, I, I, I just like to talk to you about Harrods. That's what brought it up. Have you been to Harrods Mall? Harrods Mall is probably too expensive to go into. And uh, that's what it was, Ron. It was a teletype machine. Thank you. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> uh, I guess we're both old. Uh, you're young enough to remember. Anyways, that's what it was. But Harrods, I went to Harrods. Harrods is in London. And, um, you know, it's quite an experience to go there and see the, see all the drama that goes on with the queen's palace and outside and see the queen's jewels. That's really interesting. Really interesting. I did some meetings there. I'd still like to go back to you watching in London. I'd love to come back, come back and be with you. And in, in the UK, I learned a whole new language in the UK. And would you like to hear the language in, in the UK? Now, I don't have the accent down very well, but I've got the language down. We're going to take the lift after we talk on the telly, Sue, and then we're going to go down to the, uh, put, put the nappies in the bonnet, not the boot, the, 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 boat, the boot, not the bonnet. And then we're going to go to the chemist and uh, we're going to pick up, I don't know, I forget the language. You didn't understand a word I said. Maybe you did. The telly is the telephone, the lift. Go down to the car. I forget what they call a car. People mover. That's it. People mover. Go to the people mover. I, I invented this whole, you know, sentence, this whole thing, because I, with all these words that were just, we use them, we understand what they mean, but we don't, you know, they say, what is the man over there hooting his horn and flashing his indicators? What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I remember Angela and I were first married. We went over there, and uh, well, we were in Africa, and they use the same dialect. They use the same language, the English language. It's kind of, you know, uh, pardon me, would you happen to get me some pepper? Some what? Pepper. Some what? Pepper. I don't know where no pepper is. Well, give me some pepper. Uh, and, and bring me a cover. Uh, some pepper and a cover? What are you talking about? A pepper and some cover. He wants to take some pepper and, and go to bed. He wants to go to bed with some pepper. That's what I'm thinking. What in the world? No, he a pepper. A pepper. A pepper is a pepper. Right here, this is a pepper. And, and, and a cover is, is what the pepper goes in. Yes, that's right, Stacy. Queen's English. It was so hard. I, I thought I, I had no idea. I, th I had no idea I was going to have to interpret. Pepper means paper. And cover means envelope. And boot means... Uh, trunk 
and bonnet means hood of the car, and lift means elevator, and <laughs> and don't eat with a napkin, whatever you do. Don't do that. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Nappies are diapers. You don't ever say diaper. Oh, you'll get in big trouble. It's a whole nother world. But anyways, I paid $5. No, 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 more than that. Five British pounds to use the commode. That's right. Five British pounds. It's a. It's larger than our nickel. Weighs heavier. Sterling British pound. And you got to put it in the door. I guess California went that way too, but it's, what, a quarter? Five British pounds. What is that? Eight dollars, seven dollars, seven, eight dollars U.S. to use the toilet and some nappies. Ugh. You got to put it in there. And, uh, well, I discovered some things. And, and I, I, I have in my bathroom, I have a, um, a bottle of hand soap. It's about this big. It's $35. And the queen uses it. And uh, my wife threw a fit when I got it. And I said, I just want something that smells nice. It's called, I'll tell you what the name of it is. I should get a commission for this for promoting them. Molten Brown. M-O-L-T-O-N-B-R-O-W-N, just like it sounds. I don't know if there's an E at the end of that or not. Doesn't matter. Molten brown. It's royalty. It smells pretty good. And it does, it, it has a little bit of pepper in it. Not paper, pepper, real pepper. Wouldn't that be funny? Hey, bring me the soap with some pepper in it. What? You, you got paper in the in the soap? No pepper. <sighs> it would be, it's real confusing. And then, and then I rented a people mover. I rented a people mover, Mike. Micah. And uh, they gave me a people mover, and I'm on the wrong side of the road, wrong side of the driver's seat, and I got the gear shift in my hand and the clutch on the wrong side. <laughs> and to make it all even more dramatic, a, a, a bunch of sheep. Is it a herd or a flock? Is a flock of sheep? No, flock of geese. Is flock of geese. Herd of sheep. What is it for sheep? It's something for sheep. There's a word for sheep. It's not a herd. I don't think it's a herd. Mm, fold, a sheep fold. The sheep fold comes out in front of my people mover. And I slam on the brakes. That was quite a challenge to drive in the UK. That's where I was first introduced to roundabouts. Well, we got those here now. I don't like roundabouts. Do you like roundabouts? Do you like roundabouts? All these cities are getting roundabouts. All of y'all are getting roundabouts. You're learning about them. They've been around for centuries. All of a sudden, all these uh, liberal clip heads, uh, they like the idea. They do say that it saves, you know, accidents uh, at stoplights rather than a four-way stoplight. But four-way stoplight is just so American, Americana. I can't say Americana. I went to Mexico. They don't, they don't even have a stoplight. I was in Mexico. And we come to a, we come to a, a four-way stoplight, and there's no light. There's not even a sign that says alto. You know, that means stop. And um, I don't think I know anybody likes roundabouts. Tammy in Iowa doesn't like them. Well, that makes sense. What what are you going to do with a cornfield? And you got four corners of the cornfield. You're going to cut the farmer's corn off for a roundabout. Do do you have roundabouts, Tammy, where you are in Iowa? I just can't stand them. Crystal, I'm I'm with you. But they do say, you know, I'll tell you why it doesn't cause accidents. Because... It slows everybody's brain down, and it's like trying to maneuver. And okay, Stacy says I am ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. How do you say that? Now, Stacy, a Texan, is using the Queen's English. (laughs) I understand what it means. She says, so the standard thing wouldn't be too much of an issue, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I don't like him. I don't like him. But they save lives, they say. I don't know. They they drive you up a wall. I don't like roundabouts. Oh, oh, and the rooms in the UK. We have some UK people watching me tonight, eh? Canadians, I know. They they got they you go to do the dishes in the dishwasher? No, that's not the dishwasher. That is the washing machine for the clothes. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the clothing and the dishes go in the same machine but separate. So if you're going to do a load of wash for dishes, you put them in the same machine, then you take them all out. And if you're going to do clothes, I think you put I think, I think that's what I heard with my own ears. I didn't stop to explore it, but that's what I think I heard. 
Mexico, I can't say it's Americana because Mexico doesn't even, most places, some places do, but a lot of places don't. I said, how do you not get in a wreck? They said, oh, amigo, hermano, el brother. They said, <laughs> they said, all we do is we look for the dust. We look for the dust. If we see the dust, then we slow down. If we don't see the dust, we keep going. Andale, andale, pronto. Whatever they say, entrada. Oh, I've been all over the world. I've heard so many things. <laughs> so I can't say I can't say the four way stop with a stoplight is American. I can't do that. It's it's it wouldn't be right. There are South American countries that that are part of America. They are part of America. Okay. I went to Canada one time. I flew into Canada. Left Seattle. Went went up there. Got on a small plane. Pedal jumped over to another little island. Where was that? Where was that one place I went to? What's that? Prince Rupert. Prince Rupert. It's halfway between Alaska and the United States, which is, by the way, tremendously a huge landmass. It'll take you days and days and days to try to drive that, and you'll hate it. You, you got you, you must you have mosquitoes come. They look like seven forty sevens. They're dragging a moose. There goes a moose. Who, what's holding it? Oh, a mosquito. Don't worry about it. It's a Canadian mosquito. Where'd they come from? Minnesota. <laughs> Rick, I'm glad to see you tonight. I don't know if you're getting this blizzard up there where you are, but in Portland, Vancouver, we are getting hammered with uh, snow and ice. I think Seattle's getting it too, but if you're not getting it, Rick, you're you're about to get it. It's coming your way, and it's going to get tired of us and run over and hit Iowa. And uh, usually never comes down to Oklahoma, just shoots straight up into visit my dear brother and sister up in Michigan. And that's the end of that. So yes, I've been all over the world and, and I, I learned so many things and met so many people. And you, you, you know, when you travel around the world, you got to have extreme patience because you don't know what they're saying. You don't know what they're saying. I've got up sometimes, tried to use their language and end up cussing from the platform. Didn't mean to. It just it, You just say a little word. It's just one little twist deviation wrong. Like, for example, in Taiwan, if you say, Dao Hui, that means David. But if you take the tone of that same word, Dao Hui, it means big stomach. Okay, so it's a little prophetic, I guess, but <laughs> it's horrible because one tone inflectuation can turn the whole word, make it sound something totally just different, just so, totally different. I guess I'm not supposed to be funny. I, I guess I'm not supposed to joke or cut up. Preachers don't like that. People in church have... Oh, Virgil. Virgil, you are hurting me, brother. He's, Virgil is in North Carolina. Virgil, are you in Florida? Are you in Florida right now? Virgil, please tell me. Because that's all I've got on my mind. Seriously. I mean, I'm trying to get Jesus on my mind. And I sit in my chair. And I'm looking out the window. And I'm seeing the children build a, a pitiful so snowman. They did their best. They all took their little carrot out for the nose. None of it worked. It doesn't stick. The eyeballs don't stay. The twigs are pitiful. And it's just, it looks like the Tower of Babel. It doesn't look like a snowman. It's supposed to be round and round. It just goes straight up, with, you know, like that. But they tried. They tried. And all I can think about is Florida. I mean, like, literally, I'm, 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 am I obsessed with Florida? Ten times. Virgil is in Florida. Jesus, help. I'm going to pray for you right now, Virgil. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, oh, this is di this is a different Virgil. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to look close. I knew I had friends in Florida. I, 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 no, this is not Virgil from North Carolina. Uh, I know. Yes, brother Virgil from Florida. He says it's 80 degrees there. Okay, I think we can all caravan. And let's get out of here and go down. Anywhere. I don't care. Fort Myers, uh, Sarasota, Tampa. Uh, Miami would be real nice if you can afford it, but you know, you got to stay up Gainesville. That way you can afford the oranges, uh, whatever. I don't know. I'm just in rare form tonight. I wear my sweater. I didn't wear a tie. It's blizzard outside. Let it snow. And I got my tea and I got my notes and I'm ready to preach to you. I want to, I want to sing with you tonight. I'm just kind of waiting for everybody to come in the room, but Florida, 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 just got out of my mind. My father, help my mind, renew my mind. This is the only bad part of my mind. This is the only negative stuff. 
I have property in Florida. I want, I want to build. I want to build in Florida. Can we build in Florida? Yeah, that's what I would like. I would like my studio in Florida. I'm a, I, maybe, Lord, am I asking too much? There was an earthquake 37 miles from me, Doris, the other day. I thought I felt something. Nobody else felt it. There was an earthquake 37 miles from me. It was 2.9 on the Richter scale, I think what they said. Hi, hi, Lisa. Lisa is in Louisiana. She's not getting no snow, nothing. All she sees is palm trees from Louisiana. Yes, but they get hurricanes. I heard that. I heard that. Yes. So that's the way it is. One of these days, one of these days, my children are going to go to college. They're going to be successful in everything they put their hand to. And I'm going to make them send me money, at least $100 a month to me. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Some of you are like, <laughs> what did he just say? Well, maybe they'll become my partners, you know, and I could go to Florida, me and mama. I'm gonna get, I told somebody the other day, I said, mama and I are going to go get a sports car. We're going to move to Florida. I'm going to get out of this blizzard. I'm going to get me a two fishing pole. You grab a line, I'll grab a pole, honey. And uh, we're we just going to enjoy, and our kids, they, they can just go. They just go on. Go, go do your thing. Come and see us Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's if you want. Uh, birthday, send us a card. But support us, $100 a month. <laughs> I don't think mom's going to let that fly. And you know what the truth of the matter is? It doesn't work that way. The man thinks I'm going to get a sports car. I'm going to move to Florida. You grab a line. I'll grab a pole. We're going to go down by the fishing hole. We're going to sit there and retire. That's what we think. But you know what the truth of the matter is? You trade in the idea of a sports car for another minivan. Some of you are laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. You trade it in for a minivan and suddenly you have multiplied they, they're, you just don't have five anymore. Now, everybody's got four and five children. Yes, Stacy's got it. Okay, Stacy's in Texas. She said, you say that till you get grandchildren. This is what I'm talking about, Stacy. You've hit the nail on the head. So now, five children have four children each. That's 20. So now you got 25. Where are you going to put those? This is the point of getting, I need a Corvette. I used to have a Corvette. I got married. My wife made me sell it. I think that's a bad idea. I need to go back to a Corvette. Because I cannot fit 25 children. I hear my wife in the other room making some comments. Thank God I got the headphones on. I cannot hear what she's saying. But I can see 25 people cannot fit in a Corvette. So what we'll have to do is just get Mama a big old Suburban. And then I'll drive the Corvette. But I'll just make sure that I'm in the Corvette with her together. And then that way it'll be a real clue. Bye. We're off to Sarasota. And uh, that's what it should be. But that's not what it's going to be. I'm dreaming. You're hearing me dream out loud. It's a blizzard out, and I'm talking about Florida. And uh, that's the way it should be, but it's not. Uh, let's get out of this thinking here. Are you enjoying this tonight? Got some new things to share with you tonight. Hang on to your hat. This is going to be good tonight. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right Tell us what's on your mind by calling right now. Right now. 1-888-701-4483. That's 1-888-701-4483. Call now. I'm with you live tonight, and we're going to have a good time talking about the law of honor. And uh, I just thank the Lord that he has shown me these laws, these principles, the principles of God. And I was singing this earlier. You know it? I don't know all the words. Oh, where? Could I go? <laughs> Where could I go? Needy for my soul. I need a friend to help me in the end. This is for you, Doris. Where? the Lord I don't know all the verses I'm just going to sing it where could I go oh where could I go needing a refuge for my soul I'm needing a friend 
to help me in the end? Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? I need For my soul Needing a friend To help me in the end Where could I go but to the Lord Where could I go? Come on, Brother Tony in Alabama Where could I go? Needing a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? For my soul Needing a friend To help me in the end Where could I go but to the Lord Where could I go but to Jesus Where could I go Come on, sing it with me Oh, where could I go? Needing a refuge for my soul. I was needing a friend. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Come on, sing along with me. Needing a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the so much to the song more but i think it's best to keep things simple people enjoy that better you're listening to david woods and pray america live all right let's turn to the word of god tonight and i've got so many truths to give you tonight it's just gonna be a blessing let me say before we get started the new total that's come in overnight and it's just blessed me Bless me so good to know we are below 15,000. We are below our goal of 15,000. We started out at the beginning of the month. We're not even halfway through, but at the beginning of the month, we needed $20,000 in this month's budget. And it's going to take, as I took it to the Lord and prayed over it, the Lord said, I've got a $5,000 giver. 
And I said, Lord, it's, uh, you know, we had some people, accountant and CPA look at it. And they said, projected, they said, it's going to, it's going to require a $5,000 gift if you're going to meet this kind of goal this, this month. And, uh, I took it to the Lord and the Lord said, I've got somebody that will sow a $5,000 gift. And, uh, I said, father, I, I don't want to commit to this in my spirit. I want to believe it all the way through. He says, I've got somebody that not only has it, but they have a tender heart towards you and towards you and your wife and your family, and they're going to sow it. So he gave me the confidence, the rich confidence in my spirit, even before we went on the air the first of this month, and we're trusting God. Maybe somebody's watching tonight for the very first time. You're stuck. You can't go anywhere. You're in the home. You've got some stew on or some something in the crock pot, something slow burning. You can't go where, anywhere. You, you just, you're just there. You're snowed in. You're iced in. The good thing about the snow and the ice, typically, unless you're in Minnesota, in our area, as long as you're in the valley, it leaves and melts just as fast as it comes. So it's always short-lived where I live. I know that's not the case for Minnesota. I mean, I don't know how y'all do it. I do not know. Is anybody watching me from Minnesota tonight? I do not know how a Minnesotan lives they even drill a hole in the ice and throw a pole down. <laughs> no, not from me. <laughs> not from me. I don't want to think about that. Again, my mind gravitates, Tony, to... Uh, Tony's watching. Tony's from Minnesota. Tony, my mind gravitates to Florida every time I think about this cold, icy, snowy weather. But they're used to it. I mean, they, they, they live in Long John's. <laughs> Here's... I don't know. I'm in a rare mood tonight. <laughs> Uh, my total has come down and I, I want you to be a part of it tonight. 14,990 to go, $14,990 to go this month. And I'm believing God with you. And as you sow into this ministry, you're showing the law of honor in motion. And, um, I thank God for people just like you that don't mind helping. And you understand that this is a valuable ministry to invest in and to sow into. I thank God for that in you. But it started at 20000 Here we are, not even halfway through the month, and we're looking at less than $15,000. Father, I thank you that this is going to be, uh, we're going to call it a miracle, but Father, this is just the everyday work of the Lord. I thank you, Father, that this is not a big deal to you. This is not a big deal to God. God knows how to get a hold of this kind of money. He knows how to bring it to us. He knows how to bring it to us, and we know how to pray it in and believe for more, for you, that there's more coming for you. Don't ever stop in fear. So give, watch, pray, seek, and find. Knock, and the door will be opened. I thank you for it, Lord. Somebody said, how can you talk about that? How can you be so bold to just ask for money for your ministry? Well, I believe in what I'm doing. That's how. And, um, I believe in what I'm doing. When you believe in a vision, you don't mind asking. And, and Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Now, I always keep in mind that God is my source. God is my source. All others are simply instruments. And so you're watching tonight from Michigan to Kentucky to California to Texas to Florida, from Georgia to Minnesota to Washington to Oregon and to Pakistan. Hello, my dear Pastor Gill is watching from Pakistan, and I'm so glad. We're talking to tonight about the law of honor. I just cracked that window open, and I probably shouldn't have done it. I'm in a sweater. I thought it was going to be too hot under these lights, and I think I made a mistake. I think I made a mistake. But hold on. Let me, let me call some. We'll get housekeeping to come. Housekeeping is my children. <laughs> Except mama comes through the door. Yeah, close that. The blizzard's coming through. There we go. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's that's better. I didn't realize it's going to get so cold. Pastor, it is so cold in the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. Uh, you have to double layer. Point that light towards me, would you please? Just point it there. Just turn it. There you go. That's perfect. Wonderful. We got it now. To honor means to make heavy. That's what the word honor means, to weigh down and to carry weight. You honor God 
when you allow his word to carry so much weight in your life that nothing and no one can sway you away from the word. Oh, okay, yes, I'll do that. I asked you to sow and I didn't tell you where to go. Go to www.monthlypartners.com. That's www.monthlypartners.com. Go to that website there. It is so easy to give. You, Of course, you can always give by way of text, 458218. What was it, 4583? I think it was what it was. And you can put the word give in your phone and it'll pop up on the screen exactly where you're supposed to give. It's so easy. We've, we've, we really explored, we really researched to find the easiest way for you to give. And uh, you can give by using your texting. Uh, you can use by website, www.monthlypartners.com. And uh, just as soon as I said the texting, it didn't come up anymore. I need to memorize that scripture. I mean, it's not scripture, that telephone number to text to. Uh, but if you text the word give immediately, 458-218-8129, that's it. 458-218-8129, text that word give to that number and boom, it'll come right up on your phone and show you what to do and how to put it all. You don't even need to register. It says register or sign in, forget it. If you want to, if you do it monthly, it'll automatically do it for you. If you do one time, you don't even need to do it. People make that thing so complicated when it's not. Just don't don't mess with that register sign and stuff. Just do, just do it, and watch to see the Lord bless you. But to honor makes means to make heavy, to weigh down. It's like the word gold. Have you ever have you ever lifted gold? It's kind of heavy. It's like whoa. In the sixties and seventies, people would come by and say, "Hey, man." What's the heavy? And in reality, they were saying in their conversation, they, what they were saying is what's the most predominant, biggest thought on the forefront of your mind? What's the he- What are you honoring? Now, honor comes from your heart. And uh, I want to read this to you tonight. I, I appreciate our time in the word. I appreciate our time together. Try to stay with me the whole program if you can. Something that you probably don't know, and it would be worth for you hearing. If you stay 29 minutes, Facebook, YouTube records it, and they watch. It's called algorithms. In the two hours that I'm on, hundreds of people come in and out of the program. They watch it. They listen a little bit. They get something. Boom, they're off to the next thing. And uh, it's very rare when you find somebody like Tammy and Ron or Ron and Karen that stay with me the whole two hours, it really blesses me when I know somebody's hanging with me the whole program. Now, there are some who have showed a season of faithfulness to this ministry. But boom, they're off on something else. Their focus is broken. And understand Crystal's got to work tomorrow. I understand that. But there's some that are with you for a season. They can't keep their focus. They can't keep their attention. They learn a little bit from you and then boom, they're off to somewhere else. They're just not faithful. <clears throat> and uh, Stacy, I understand that. There are things that happen along the way. But uh, Facebook and YouTube do not realize any of what you might say they just realize, oh, they stayed 20 minutes or, oh, they stayed two minutes. And so that's what triggers the algorithms on social media. Now, if you're watching on radio, you are probably staying with me the whole program. Most likely you're working in a shop. Uh, you're, I have a lot of people call me from a factory. And uh, they'll stay with me the whole shift. They're doing the same job even after I go off the air. They're still there plugging away, doing the same thing. They got the radio in the background. I hear that a lot. And of course, our television is 30 minutes long, 29, 30 exactly. And we're getting ready for a new series. All of these new series this last week that you've heard are going on television. But I'm real grateful. I'm real grateful. And I really, I really love it when you don't allow people to talk you out of this ministry. That's right. There's people that are trying to talk you out of this ministry. 
And if they do that, you really should, you should come to me and tell me. I wish you would. I wish you'd send me an email. You know what, so-and-so, they're trying to get me to not watch you no more. It's happening. It's happening. And first the Lord showed me. Then two people called me and tried to tell me. It confirmed what the Lord had already been showing me. I don't know why they do that. It just must be a devil moving them in a direction that they don't know that they're being. It's a seducing spirit. It's pulling you away. Pulling you away. And uh, it, it, it can be hurtful. That rejection can come and be hurtful. And I've been hurt all my life. I've been hurt all my life. Did you know that? I have been hurt all my life. But, hey, it's no different than you. You've been hurt all your life, too. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be a pastor, somebody said to me one time, you got to have skin as thick as a rhino's hide and a heart as pure as gold. That's good wisdom. Maybe not the best vernacular, but it's good wisdom. Skin as thick as a rhino's hide and a heart that's pure gold. Let it bounce off of you. Don't let it cause you to be upset. And, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about, about the law of honor, because when you understand the law of honor, it's more than just treating somebody with respect or somebody with dignity. When you're giving thoughts to overbearing thoughts, you're giving them space in your mind to worry, worrying about what you're doing, worrying about where you're going, worrying about what's happening. Um, yes, Brother Israel says, if I'm, if I can't watch it live, I watch a rerun. Thank you for telling me that. Cause I do, I do do the reruns and I try to put up there re air. So, you know, but most people know, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. Obviously he's not live. I'd have no control. Where is it? Is it here? No, it's here. Right here. I have no control over that red bug that says live. That's Facebook's doing. I have no control about that. They put it up. Actually, they cover up my logo. Now I come to think about it. I can't put it on the other side because the television network puts theirs on there. So whatever. But you let things get into your mind and you start worrying about it and it becomes an overbearing thought. And, and what happens is, is that when that happens, you gave honor to the worry. You gave honor to the fear. And in Matthew chapter 15 and in verse eight, Jesus, the words are in red. He says, the people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I think there's a lot of Christians who do church just because it's something that's fun. They like to sing. They like the band. They like the fellowship. And they, 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 they worship God with their mouth, but their heart is so far from. And I have been in church services where I've seen people, they sing, they preach, they dance, they shout. And then I think, who was it? Stacy in Kentucky was talking to me about this the other day and it really rang home. And then you see their personal life and it's so messed up and it's so, it's so contrary, it's so different than what a Christian is supposed to be. And you kind of have to step back and say, wait a minute, you know, that's not my ideal of a Christian life. But what it is is that people do not honor God only with their mouth, but not with their heart. And to honor means to make heavy, to weigh down, to carry weight. It's not going nowhere. You honor God when you allow his word to carry so much weight in your life that nothing and no one can sway you away from him, the relationship you have with him in the word. Honor comes from your heart. So let me just say this. You are honoring somebody and something somewhere. It just matters about whether that right, whether that person or that thing or that place that you're honoring is right to honor. I was invited to a Buddhist temple years ago. I was 17, 18 years old. I reluctantly went to the front door. I couldn't take it. What, what does light 
and darkness have to do with each other. They don't mix. I felt an evil, rancid, evil spirits everywhere. God's opened up my spiritual eyes. I could just see horrible stuff in the spirit. Pastor Chris, both of you, all of you, the old string family, I love you all. They are, they are in Sacramento. That was a good move. I ministered for them in, in Tacoma, Washington. It is a blizzard here. All you have is chili and rain. I'll take the chili. <laughs> I go to the Buddhist temple and I just can't go in. I just can't go in. It's just, I, I don't, it's grievous. It's a, it's like you ever put two magnets together on the wrong side and they just keep pushing back. It was like that. But there were people in there lighting incense. And by the way, the Bible tells us that no longer do we worship with incense. That's a whole different dispensational time, whole different period. And uh, we don't worship with incense. I don't like incense around my house. I don't like it. When I smell it, it, it makes me want to gag. It is a gag reflex. It, it brings your mind over into idolatry. I do not worship God with incense. I am the incense. I'm burning on fire for God. I'm the worshiper, not the incense. That's a whole nother study. But my point is, is that I saw people lighting. Uh, what'd they do? They bought, they would buy a, uh, it would buy little sticks, little pumps. We would call them little pumps. And when they'd light the end of that thing, it would smoke up the whole place. And they would do it under these Confucius, idolatrous gods, dead, fake, false gods. They thought they were going to get lucky. They were going to get some kind of favor or something. Idolatry. But what they were doing is they were making that idol a heavy thing in their life. People do it with cars. People do it with houses. In America, we have different idols, sports. Oh, I don't want to touch sports. Let's look at the algorithms. We just lost people. I just mentioned the S word, sports. People just, they worship sports in America. Not just in America, all over the world. But honor comes from your heart and in and the question is not knowing how to honor. You know how to honor. You honor your boss. Most of you honor your boss. He writes the check. I asked my daughter the other day. I said, do you know who your boss is? Yeah, so-and-so. I said, no, that's not your boss. That's your manager. I said, do you know who your boss is? Well, not really. I said, when you get your check, look at the bottom. That's who your boss is. He who writes the check runs the show. He who writes the check runs the show. And I said, I... Uh, I've got a message. I need to pull this message out. 12 ways to the road of promotion. Is it 12 or 11? I forget. I'll have to find that out again. You honor your boss. Getting there early. Going home late. Always asking your boss. How I'm here to do one thing. to Solve your problem. Whatever your problem is. I'm your guy. This is one of the keys on the road of promotion. You know, it's so different nowadays. You got H and R, H and R, whole department. They don't care. We don't care. The whistle blows. We're out of here. That happens. But you can see who honors their boss. You can see who honors their work. You can see who honors their wife, honors their husband. The holidays coming up. I got a red Valentine's card. I got a balloon. I got some flowers coming. Honoring my wife. I was thinking about this today. I don't know of another woman who works as hard as my wife and is extremely meticulous about details. It's absolutely phenomenal. The individual that she is, and I thank God every day for her and I honor her. She's strict with the children. You know, I spoil them. Come here, baby. I'll fix it. She's on their case, riding them. And sometimes, you know, they'll come to me and they'll try to play me against her. I said, no, no, no. 
I'm on mama's side. Oh, that's a new concept for some of them when they're little. I'm on mama's side. But mama says I'm with her. And then I remember the look on Andrew's face one time. I, I told him, he said, I told Andrew one time, I said, before she was your mama, she was my wife. Oh, that was such a shocker. Such a shocker. But honor comes from the heart. And we see that a lot of Christians, they, they give honor with their mouth, but their heart is far from them. Let's take some calls tonight and um, pray for some people. But I want to continue in this word tonight, the law of honor. It's going to be a big blessing. Tell us what's on your mind by calling right now. Right now. 1-888-701-4483. That's 1-888-701-4483. Call now. Praise the Lord. We love to take your calls each and every night. Hi, caller. What's on your mind tonight? Let's try it again. Hi, caller. What's on your mind tonight? What's my caller thinking about tonight? Hallelujah. I know my calls, my phones are working. They're supposed to be working. Yes, they're not working. They were working. They were working so good. Oh, they hung up. That's what's the matter. Well, call me back. Call me back. Mere lip service doesn't honor God. God is honored when your decisions and actions are solely based on his word. God is honored when your decisions and actions are solely based on his word. Let me, let me say some things here that are deep in my spirit. My father's 80 years old, 81, I think. My mother's 82. They're both living. I still honor them. I buy them things from time to time. I call them and check on them call him and tell him I love him. Thank you for beating me when I was little. No, 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 not beating me, spanking me, correcting me. I honor my parents. I see some people, their children do not honor them. And the Bible tells us that there are promises connected with those who honor their parents. You will live long and it will go well with you. If you do not know how to honor your parents, your mother and your father, you won't live long and it won't go well. Just plain and simple, that's what the word says. Pick up the phone and call them. Tell them what they mean to you. Tell them how much you love them. Listen to them. Ask them questions about them. Give them money. Send them things. Let them know you're, they're on your mind. Honor your father and your mother. Doesn't just say when you're little, not just when you're a child. You honor them. I honor my wife in front of my children. There are things I want to say in the heat of a moment. I keep my mouth shut because I'm honoring my wife in front of my children. I honor guests. When I have a guest, speaker, or singer, I honor them. I honor them by putting them in the best place. Usually the place of their choice. If it's poor and they choose a place and it's not very good, they don't know the area, they're trying to be kind. I said, well, 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 well. there was a pastor in Denver, Colorado. I've had interesting, I've had interesting situations with Colorado. And one pastor did not like, three people got saved 
One person got miraculously healed, came running up and threw, the, threw her cane up on the platform and everybody went wild. And the pastor got so angry. He was first angry that I was wearing a suit and a tie. That was his first point of contention, as if it mattered. Judge me for what I wear. He got so angry, <clears throat> he came up and stripped the microphone off my tie in front of everybody and said, get out. I've never had that happen before. It was a shocker. 80% of his people went out with me. He said, why don't you just stay? I said, I'm under his authority while I'm here. I'm in his house. He did not like the gifts of the spirit. I told him, I said, we have a website. It says we are Pentecostal in nature. And had you not wanted a Pentecostal preacher, why would you bring me in? Well, I didn't know it was going to be like this. He said, three people saved, somebody healed. He said, it looks to me like somebody on television, as if that's a bad thing. No, what it was is an evil spirit manifesting in his life. But hold on, listen, listen. This is a very... Very fascinating story. I go back. I, I, I take my wife. I take my, I think I had two children. One, maybe two. She said, what? My wife said, what do we do? I said, get the product. Our teaching CDs. We had those back then. We don't carry them anymore. I said, box it up. Slap it in beef or boogie and we're getting out of here. We got out in the car and thunderclouds formed out of nowhere and lightning came and struck the flagpole where he was meeting. As we were walking, as we were going, as we were leaving, I was shocked. I went back to my hotel, not knowing how the rest of it was going to be paid for the whole week. I flew in. And at the time, I had five people on my board of directors. I had an Assembly of God, a Church of God man, four square man, independent woman, somebody else. And I sat in my hotel room shocked and stunned. Three people get saved. One person gets healed. And the preacher didn't like that. Some people are honoring God with their mouth, but their heart is far from God. I've never been thrown out in 30 some years of ministry. I've never been thrown out of a place before, except for that time, Denver, Colorado. Now I've been to Denver three times before that powerful meetings. Once with Nora Lamb, twice with Nora Lamb, once with Nancy Harmon. I thought people were going to swing by the chandeliers on Easter Sunday at Larry Ansel's church in Westminster, Colorado. Powerful. But this day was uniquely different. Strange, strange. I go back to my hotel and I'm in, I'm nearly in tears. I, I've got to pay the budget on the hotel that week. I'm not sure how three people got saved. They're not going to get follow up unless some of those people, you know, that, what a mess. And so I called my board member who happened to be of that particular denomination. And I told him what happened. He said, kept saying, oh, no, oh, no. He knew me well, knew me well enough to be on my board. Oh, no, this is horrible, he said. Let me call my supervisor. And so... He called a supervisor and the super, supervisor was in Spokane, Washington said, Oh, we've been having trouble with this character. Tell him. No, he said, get his phone number. So he got the phone number, gave it to me. And he called me in my hotel. I forget his name. Doesn't matter. And he said, first, I want to tell you evangelist woods. He, he, he honored me, called me not just David, 
He honored me with the title. Not that I'm seeking that, but he, he recognized it. He said, oh, first of all, on the behalf of the Foursquare denomination, he says, I want to apologize to you. He said, secondly, he said, I want you to stay in that hotel room. And he said, our district will pay for that. And he said, thirdly, I've already arranged for our private pilot in Spokane to fly me and another brother out of Spokane to that church in Denver and set him down. I was really shocked. It was the day, it was one of the days that I recognized the importance of a denomination. There were two days in my life I felt that the Lord was talking to me about the importance of denomination. That I'm not against denomination. I think denominations are important, especially when you got crazy people out here trying to be pastors when God never called them to be a pastor. I ministered for a crazy in Oklahoma City one time. I went to the next town in Texas. They told me they said something's wrong with him. Don't worry about it. Nobody can get along with him. Here's what I did. I, I received an offering in Oklahoma City. I think it was more. Maybe it's more. More Oklahoma. I received an offering because the Lord told me to. It was cold like this, snow out. It might have been January. I was 19, 20 years old. The Lord said, stop what you're doing at the end of the service. Receive an offering. And when you don't let anybody know what you're doing with it, just tell them to trust you as a man of God. And they brought and they laid money in my hand. I put it on the pulpit altar and I counted it, laid it out, and, and had the deacons come, two of them, and count it in front of everybody. And they counted up as like $182 in some cents. I'll never forget it. There's a family on the back row. Dad, mom, bing, 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 bing. Four, I think four children. And they all look pitiful. They all look nasty and dirty. None of them had a bath. All dressed in yesterday's clothes. And the Lord said, take that offering and give it to them. I'll never forget when she... got up and I told her, I said, ma'am, you and your husband come. This is for you. The congregation, <gasps> as if it was a big deal. Less than $200 is a big deal. Are you for real? They began to cry. Lots of drama at the altar. Sobbing. I told you, she said, if you'd come to church, she'd look at him like she's going to kill him. I told you, if you come to church, God would bless you and help you. Come to find out it was the exact down to the penny what they needed to get their, I don't know, electric heat, gas, whatever it was, get their heat back on in their home. The next day they were freezing. And the pastor said, I'm not having you back because he said, we don't even know those people. They're not even members here. As if it really meant something. <laughs> These are breathing, warm-blooded people that need love, that need their heat on. And so he ran me out. The pastor at the next town, Lubbock, treated me like royalty. He said, don't worry about him. Come to find out he did. He, he went nuts. He was committed. He lost his mind. He had mental illness. He was committed to some kind of a home. It wasn't right. Not everybody you deal with is right upstairs. The lights are on, but ain't nobody home. And you just deal with people like that. It's a shocker when you're in the middle of the judgment on that thing. So back over here, Spokane, this guy's getting on the denomination. It was, it was that time, then this time, then another time I saw bags of beans and rice stacked to the corner at the embassy in Kenya. 
and it was stamped on the front of it, big rubber stamp, black ink, that this is a gift from the Methodist Church USA. Those are three times when I I began to recognize as I was maturing and growing in God that there's a powerful place for denominations. The number one is the loneliest number. And somebody by themselves can't do much, but together they can take on the world. Powerful. So they went down to Denver, got on the private plane, told me they were going to take care of my hotel. And they did. It was odd. Odd. I was there for a revival. Started out right. And now I'm sitting in a room with nothing to do. Didn't know a whole, whole lot of people. And that overseer flew down and fired the man. But God used that. The time of rejection in my life, God used for other purposes. We think God's going to use us because the anointing is exuding from us and somebody's getting set free and somebody's getting healed, somebody's getting saved, and all that may be true. But there's a bigger picture that God is using certain situations in your life because somebody's watching at all times. And I will never forget a story that came back to me that said the international director, Jack Hayford, somebody had told him about that situation. It went all the way up. He had some kind of meeting and he said, it was told to me that he told all the preachers in that particular fellowship, they call themselves a fellowship. They're a denomination, but they like to call themselves a fellowship. That's fine. If you're a preacher in this group, and if you say you're Pentecostal, but yet you don't flow in the gifts of the Spirit, come, lay your denomination, your credentials, your ordination in my hand, because we don't need you in this denomination, something like that. As a result of what happened to me, I was the catalyst. God used me as the catalyst. Not fun, really not fun. So be it. I've said for years, God used me. Well, here's what you get. You're being used by God. Are you getting this tonight? What kind of experience did you have that you absolutely detested? You couldn't stand. You did, like, God, what is the bit? What's the bigger picture? And when you got done with it and time went by, you figured out, oh, this was the big picture. This is why I went through what I went through. Uh-huh. I see now. But I've had so many people that dishonored the gifting in me, they could not see it. They dishonored the anointing. They dishonored the God in me. They dishonored the person. And um, somebody said to me one time in Florida, they said, Brother Woods, you're just a class act. I said, wait a minute. I said, I'm just a kid from Southeast Portland. Laid on the green grass, looked up in the blue sky, saw the plane way up in the air. And the Lord said to me, you're going to preach the gospel to the nations. But I learned a long time ago, the key to power in your life is understanding honor. And it's not just classy, it's honor. People are, they honor God with their mouth, but their, their heart is far from God. They say one thing, they do another. That's honor. Let's jump to the phones. Hi, caller. What's on your mind tonight? Hello. Hello. What's happening tonight? What, what's your name? My name's Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from tonight? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Is this the first time you've watched? Um, actually, my friend told me about you guys. Praise the Lord. What's on your mind tonight? I was hoping that I could get some prayer for a house blessing. I'm in a, in a bad living situation um, with my kids, and I am um, 
waiting on the Lord to bless me with a better living situation. So I was hoping for prayer. Absolutely. You know, I have a video on this very subject. And if you can go to my YouTube channel and just do a search for house, it'll it'll uh, bring it up. In fact, uh, for those of you people that are watching this on a rerun with YouTube, I'll put it right there, the link. But how God wants to give you your own house. First of all, Lindsay, are you born again? You saved? Yes. All right. That's first step because I'm an evangelist. You know, I'm looking. And, uh, well, yeah, I'm an evangelist too. You are. Praise God. Amen. Well, let me tell you, Massachusetts is sort of like Amen. Portland, Oregon. They need, they need us. They need the gift of God in us. So what is the dream that Absolutely. you, what is the dream you have in your house? What kind of a living situation would you like to see God do for you? I, well, I have three kids and I'm married and we want to have more kids. We're believing the Lord um, for another child as well. So I'm hoping for a, a four bedroom house. That's what I'm, right now I'm in a small two bedroom apartment and I'm surrounded by unsaved neighbors who have been messing with us. Uh -huh. um, it's just like the living situation is getting really bad. Um, the Lord's protected us. I don't want to take away from that, but, um, you know, like they have wrote obscenities on our door, like the B word and like F you and stuff. And My, like, um, wow. Someone break, yeah, yeah, someone tried to break into our apartment. Um, and it's like, you know, I just, you know, our, our neighbors don't have the same beliefs as us. And I mean, I don't believe that that's why, um, you know, they've been messing with us, but. You know, it's, I don't know. It's just getting, we're crammed in here. Um, the situation's just kind of getting crazy. Um, our neighbors are just, you know, really, really wicked. And I, I'm praying for my neighbors. Um, but I just, I would like to see my kids being raised in a better environment. And yes. I would love to have more space for them. I just, I want them to have, like, we stay inside. We keep to ourselves. I would like them to have a yard to play in. Um, yes. So that's, that's what I'm trusting the Lord for. All right. Now, while you're talking, there's other people that are listening and with us that are believers. Many of them are believers. Mo most all of them are believers. And they're listening. They're going to pray right along with you. I call this, Lindsay, the world's largest prayer bench because here I am in the Portland, Oregon area, and you're in Massachusetts, go across the country, and in between and yes. places around the world. We're going to pray. That's right. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God. First of all, I want to say to you, Psalm, Psalms 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord. He gives you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. He'll give you the desires of your heart. And that's why I asked you about your desires. I believe God, it's not a matter of can he do it, he will do it. And as we stretch our faith out tonight, God will take you out of that place and put you in a place of safety. And I've said on that video about the godly home that God wants to give you, the first and foremost thing that he wants to give you is a house that is surrounded with safety. It's gotta be a place of safety. So you're hitting the nail right on the head. You're going exactly in the direction of the perfect will of God for your life. And I'm sure you know that, but uh, there are- Yes, amen. <laughs> yeah. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I lift up Lindsay right now. And I pray, almighty God, that your will be done. Your word is your will. And we pray your will. And we pray your word over her and her husband and her family. Jesus, it's not your will that they're crammed up in this apartment. It's not your will that they are in a place where there's unsafe people that perhaps are even oppressed of the enemy. Father, deliver her from this place. Deliver her from this situation. In the name of Jesus, angels of God, go now. Lay hold of the right house and cause it to come to her that it would be a dream come true that when they move in, they will say, look at God. Look at God. God has got my house put together in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father, that the same miracle that came forth for Anthony in Kentucky, he was crammed in a house with wife and children, and Lord, you put him in a brand new home. And he said, to God be the glory. So Father, we declare favor over her. Meet the need. Bring her to the right house, to the right place at the right time, Lord. 
and give her favor with both God and man. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Now listen, when it happens, I want to hear back. Yes. Yeah, I want I want you to call me back and let me know. You could go to our website, PrayAmericaLive.com, and take a look at Anthony's house. Look at, he's standing in front of it. Now, I had sent him a key, and it was an uncut key. There was nothing to it. It was just nothing. And I sent it to him, and we anointed it. We prayed over it, and then he got put miraculously in a brand new home. The picture is on my website. If you go there, PrayAmericaLive.com, and it'll build your faith if you read the story there. And I'm believing the same thing that happened to Anthony, Lindsay, is going to happen to your family there in Massachusetts. Amen? Amen, and congratulations to Brother Anthony. That's amazing. It is amazing. What a great, great testimony. That's right. Praise the Lord. Well, thank and you. And the Lord is no respecter as a person. That's so right. He can do it for Anthony. He can do it for uh, Lindsay in Massachusetts. Yes. Amen. Amen. But please let me know how it goes because I'm, I've put your name down and I'm going to continue to pray. And I know many of our partners that watch us on an ongoing basis, they also know to pray on an ongoing basis. I've had people say, well, did you hear from so-and-so? Whatever happened? Then no, I didn't ever hear but I'm believing you're going to call back and tell us, look what the Lord has done, and we'll shout and give God the praise. Amen? Amen. I promise. Yeah. Lindsay, do you like watching you us on Facebook or YouTube? Which one have you seen us on? Um, I will, I'll check you out on both, actually. Um, okay. I'm calling in tonight because my friend watches you guys, and she told me that I needed to give you a call. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, we're going to believe with you. And I'm, you know, if you Thank will, you. if you will send me an email, I'll send you an uncut key. You put it on your key ring and we're going to pray over that and believe God that you're going to go down and make a copy of the, of the key, the master key that God's going to give you for your new house. Amen. Yay, amen. Hey, hallelujah. That's right. Thanks, Lindsay, for calling me. Bless you as well. Yes. And thanks for holding so long. God bless you. Praise the Lord. From Massachusetts. Hallelujah. You're listening to David Woods and Pray America Live. Tonight we're talking about the word honor in your life and how honor is so powerful. And uh, your life will never be the same when you learn about honor. God is honored when your decisions and actions are solely based on his word. And I think a lot of people, they don't honor the pastor. They don't honor those in authority. They don't honor those who have worked for God for a long time. There are those who don't honor the word of God. There are many who don't honor the tithe. And um, last night I ministered to you a message called How to Believe Without a Second Thought. I'm going to put that right up here and you can click on it. How to Believe Without a Second Thought. And I'm talking about faith and, and, and getting into faith and then being faithful with your, with your tithe. When you are a tither, you honor God with the tithe. Somebody said, I want to honor God, but I don't really know how. How do I honor God? You honor him with the tithe. And when you tithe and when you give an offerings, you're honoring God. Now, then I hear people who say, Brother Woods, all you talk about is money. And I find a dishonorable person. If that's your response to the gospel, if that's your response to the preacher, to the pastor, to the man of God, to the prophet, the adapt, are you kidding me? You dishonor God because they work for the Lord. I work for God. I don't work for you. I don't work for people. I work for the Lord. And when you give in your tithe, you give in your offering, you're actually honoring God in that way. God is honored when your decisions and actions are solely based on his word. You cannot make scripture heavy in your life. I want scripture, the word of God, to be the heaviest thing in your life, but you can't make it the heavy in your life if you don't read your Bible, if you don't meditate on the word. Ignorance of the word prevents you from honoring God. Some of you never thought that you could honor God with your tithe. It never became a thought. And you wondered why you're broke and why you're busted and why you can't 
win at work and why you can't get promotion because you never honored God. And until you start honoring God with the tithe, you'll never win. God is your father. And the first commandment with promise is to honor your father and your mother. Ephesians 6, 2, and 3. Your parents' words should be heavier to you than the words of other people. Your parents' words should be heavier to you than the words of other people. And the same should be with God, your father. God will honor those who honor him. Where's that? 1 Samuel 2.30. 1 Samuel 2.30, God will honor those who honor him. If you don't honor God, don't honor God's choice servants. Are you kidding me? You're barking up the wrong tree. You're making a big mistake. You will not have the weightiness of the glory of God in your life if you don't honor God. When you allow God's word to carry weight in your life, your prayers, your declarations begin to carry weight with him. I think some people, they dishonor the preacher. They're robbed from the preacher just as fast. I'm talking about some pastors now. I'm talking about some people. It's a wonder they don't get in trouble and they go in and they dine and dash. I often wonder about that. Would they go in and dine and dash? Would they go through the buffet line and eat everything up off the grill and then run out the door? They don't want to honor the evangelist. They don't want to honor the prophet. They don't want to honor the pastor. Are those the same kind of people that would dine and dash? When you begin to honor God, God begins to honor and carry weight about your prayers. He starts getting involved in what concerns you. Your hours at work, your vacation time, your safety, your protection. It's big to him. You know, when God's word carries more weight than your bills, you'll tithe. You'll be a tither. There is no honor in obeying God when it's convenient, easy, or when it doesn't cost you anything. There's no honor in that. I'm getting ready to sow a seed myself in a particular way. It's not easy. But I know that when I honor God, he'll honor me. Crystal, the word dine and dash means you dine at a, at a restaurant and then you run out the door and don't pay the bill. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> How many times have I seen people, and the gospel's free, don't misunderstand. Freely you receive, freely give. But how many times have I seen people, they hear the word, they hear the message, they feel the anointing, they get set free, they get a touch from God, and they never stop to honor God. They spiritually dine and dash. Can you make a deal out of it? No, but you should teach people about it. There's no honor in obeying God when it's convenient. Not very bit convenient for me to get ready to do what I'm going to do. Not very easy. It costs me. You know what I found out? If it doesn't cost me to give to God and I just withhold it, you know what happens? I've watched it. It ends up costing me somewhere else in some kind of big repair or some kind of horrible thing. And I've, I've looked at it and I thought, wow, that bill over there came to the exact amount that I should have given to God. It touched the holy thing. It touched the holy thing. Stacy, some would say, well, you know, that's because you had class. No, no. It's because you knew how to honor God. What type of weight does God's word hold in your life?
How big is that word to you, the word of God? What does it mean to you? John 5, 23 says, no one can honor God without honoring his son. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 23, tells us you cannot honor God as the father of your life if you can't honor Jesus, the son. A lot of people, they don't honor, they don't honor Jesus. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we love God. Well, you don't honor Jesus. How can you love God? Jesus is the son. It's all twisted. Devil's got you blinded. Right. I, I want to share this with you tonight because it's going to totally revamp the way you think about the deep honoring of God, God's men, God's women, God's choice servants, the program of God. And when you begin to honor God begins to honor you. Tell us what's on your mind by calling right now. Right now. 1-888-701-4483. That's 1-888-701-4483. Call now. I wish I could read Ron and Karen's uh, text to me the other night. Maybe if they're watching... Ron and Karen from Portland, Oregon. I know you got to be watching because there's nowhere to go. There's, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> uh, you are snowed in like I am. Oh, uh, maybe there's something else going on. But maybe you could copy and paste the comment you made. Can, can I be bold enough to to impose that upon you? Copy and paste it in Facebook. And uh, Israel says what you're talking about right now is exactly what I heard in prayer today. But I want to talk about this next thing about honoring and honoring the first fruits, the first fruit. And it's something I don't often talk about and I need to, I need to talk to you about it as you, if I'm your pastor, you definitely need to hear me talk about it. But Ron and Karen, maybe they're not watching tonight, but, but they said something so profound, so awesome. And it was about honoring the first fruit and I don't know. I just like the way they said it. I like the way they put it into conversation. Maybe I can pull it up. Maybe I can pull it up. It was just, it was just lovely. I just love what they said. Where is it? Here we go. I just love this, how he says this. Ron and Karen. I won't embarrass you. I don't think I will. I've known them for so many years. They come to my house, Christmas party. I grew up in a family that wasn't a church going family. Oh, we would go occasionally like Easter Christmas. And if we were near a church where my parents knew the pastor, that I always noticed that my parents would always put money in an offering plate or bag or bucket when it came by. It was, wasn't a tip. It wasn't a tithe, but more like a tip. That's amazing. When I got married, we were going to church three times a week. And I continued to tip. Then one day, Karen asked if we could tithe on my income. I think it surprised her that without any hesitation, I said yes. That was 36 plus years and we haven't missed the 10%. We always seem to have enough. He says, I've always been taught that the tithe belongs to the local church where you're fed and the offerings are any amount given beyond that, whether to the local church or an evangelist visiting or that you go to see. And after reading the Bible, I found out about the first fruit offerings. He continues on to write me, if you get an increase, a pay raise, money from a sale in excess of what you paid for that item, the first increase belongs to the Lord. I can't say it any better than that, Ron. I said that's spot on. And I love living like that. It's the abundant life, not the limited life. 
told him some personal things. He shot back and he said again, something else about an offering to add to what I said. When giving an offering, pray to the Lord as to how much you should give. If after you have an amount, let's say he's using an example, $50. And then another amount comes to mind, says 25. He said, the second one is the devil trying to prevent you from getting the blessing that God had planned for you. Always, always, always go with the larger amount. A great way to deal with that lie is to say, okay, God told me 50. And then the lie came to me of 25. So I'll make it a total of 75. Upped it on God, upped it on the enemy. Doubt and unbelief. You see, what he's saying is there's a battle in your mind and you and it's negotiations playing out and you hit it with that as the last time he'll talk to you again about that. This, this really, Ron, you don't know what it did to me. That will shut that lion spirit up. Man, I was like a Pentecostal in a Mississippi church. That's what I want to talk about. Giving the first fruit offering is the first part of the harvest that comes up out of the ground for you. Giving the first fruit offering is the substance that brings honor to God. Where is that found? Proverbs 3 and 9. That states it better in the Amplified. But this is the substance that brings honor to God. Proverbs chapter three. And boy, you do, you do not want to miss this. Get this in your spirit. Drown yourself with the word of God. Saturate the ground of your life with the word. Proverbs three and verse nine. have my glasses. I've got 10 pair of glasses and I, none of them are here. Isn't that the way it works? Oh, Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. The presses shall burst forth with new wine. Oh, I don't like that. Well, he goes on to say, my son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Proverbs 3, 9 tells us the giving of the first fruit is the substance that brings honor to God. The difference between the tithe and the first fruit is the tithe is always the tenth, regardless of its condition. Regardless. While the first fruit is always the first one of the best. You have 12 goats, the best one. You look them all over. This one's blind. That one's mangy. This one's missing something. Wow, this is the best. Give it to the Lord. Where's that found? Leviticus 27. You take away the honor of the first fruit when you question whether or not you're supposed to sow into this ministry. You take the powder out of the gun. You take the power out of your life when you start questioning about giving the first fruit to God. And breakthrough comes when you honor God with the first fruit, it's right there. Proverbs 3, 9, Leviticus 27. And you can run over to Genesis 4 and you can see an example of it. Just because you give an offering doesn't mean that God honors it. Not every offering that you give to God does God honor. Well, that's a shocker to some people. Well, I did something big. God didn't honor it. You might've thrown it in the bucket, but God didn't honor it. Why? Cain and Abel gave God an offering. God did not honor Cain's offering. 
Cain's offering didn't honor God because it didn't cost him anything. It cost him nothing. There was no blood. There was no sacrifice. It didn't cost him anything. Abel gave the first, that's the tenth, of the best. That's the first fruit. And he honored God with the very best. And it will always cost you something. It's a sacrifice. Now, go easy on the word sacrifice because in reality, I don't care what you and I sacrificed is all about. It still doesn't match up with the sacrifice Jesus gave his life. So go easy on that word sacrifice. But it's going to cost you something to really honor God. When you fall because you did not honor God, the yokes of the world begin to easily slide over your neck. That's Isaiah 10, 27. When you, when you fail to honor God by sacrificing, it didn't cost you anything. Oh yeah, give the preacher 20 bucks. Give him a thousand when you got a hundred thousand sitting over there. It's all relative, but when you don't, when it doesn't cost you anything, when it's so easy and convenient, if you're not careful, Isaiah 10, 27 tells us that the yoke of the world can easily fit around your neck. Oh, beloved, I know that this is not easy to listen to. I know it's not even fun for some, but you got to honor God with what costs you something. You're listening to David Woods and Pray America Live. Now, honor should regularly, and we're talking about honor tonight, The word honor is the word heavy. It really means heavy, like the weight of gold. Heavy. Honor should regularly be shown to God's man of faith. The prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the man of God. I have seen people, and so have you, that could care less about the man of God. There are people who will give gifts to evil men, evil women, and forget about the man of faith. Let me tell you about the men and women of God. These men and women represent fertile soil, and that means great harvest. I was with a man one time, two men, two farmers, one north of Spokane, one south of Spokane. One of them told me, he said, would you come pray over my wheat harvest? I said, sure. I drove and drove and drove as far as the eye could see. Wheat, wheat as far as you're golden. He said, there has to be a real right time to harvest this. He said, if we, if we do it too early, it's bad. If we do it too late, it's bad. He said, the weather has to be just right. I thought, if all those conditions, wow, cost them a lot. We stretched our hand over that wheat field as far as the eye could see over the hill. I prayed over cattle ranchers, cattle. Wheat farmers, wheat. One man was a carrot farmer. He says carrots just grow about in just any kind of climate. Cold, hot, doesn't matter. And he told me, he said, I'm thinking about buying that lot. It's big. He said, you know what a farmer looks for in a lot before he plants? I said, no, I have no clue. I said, he said, yes. I said, well, maybe, maybe if the soil's polluted, He says, oh, no, he said, that's a given. He said, I wouldn't even been looking at it if it wasn't polluted. He said, what I look for in a piece of ground is to see if it's adequate to bring me a big enough harvest. 
Not every person you're sowing into has prepared the ground to be adequate to bring you a big enough harvest. That's why the Bible says some will be 30, some will be 60, some will be 100 fold. You need to know the ground you sow into. You need to do a little exploring. I wouldn't give to a preacher travels all over this country without his wife. Are you kidding me? I dragged my wife and children all over the place. We're accountable one to another. She's accountable to me. I'm accountable to her. We do things right. Why? The, the condition of the soil that you're sowing into matters. It matters for you. I have a spiritual fiduciary trust, a, a responsibility for this ground to be prepared that when you sow into it, boom, an explosion of harvest comes. I've had people tell me, I've never given to a ministry where I've seen the harvest come back so fast. And there's reasons for that. Honor should be regularly shown to God's man of faith. If you want to experience the anointing that's in my life, you honor that man. There's some people who don't honor. Not crying about it. I've known it for 30 some years. I've experienced it. The men and the women of God that God gave me the privilege to work with, I constantly honored them. It wasn't fun working for Nora Lamb. She was tough. She called me Shaldavia, rubbed my big fat ear and called me God's soldier. You God's soldier, you're going to grow up. You're going to work for God. You be God's soldier. It was tough. She'd wake up at 5.30 in the morning and start praying. Come on, today we smuggle Bible. Get up. Ugh. I remember we had a penthouse suite in, in uh, I don't know, 20th floor in Hong Kong. What was I, 17, 18? What an opportunity. Spiral staircase. Like it went up to the heavens. Her and her husband stayed upstairs. Two-floor hotel room. Grand piano overlooking Macau. I slept on the couch downstairs. That sun just rises as strong in Hong Kong as it does in Washington, D.C. Pierced my eyes. The next thing I knew, I heard Nora crying. Get up, get up. We got to go smoke a Bible today. God doesn't like laziness. Five in the morning. Laziness, wicked, they go together. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. You got soldier, you go with me today. Ah. 17 years old, you don't know. You, you don't want to know the thoughts that went through my head that time at 17 years old, but I did not speak them. I didn't utter them. I got up and I honored the woman of God. Oh, I could tell you so many things. Always made sure to go get ice for Nora, Nancy Harmon. Just little things, honoring. Open the door for her. Carry what she needed to be carried. Honoring. Do you honor God's people? Are you just concerned about God's goodies, his anointing, his gifts? I don't really think God will release his gifts until you until he sees you honoring his people. I paid many years serving, serving, serving. And that's just not all. There's many others. Joseph went from the pit to the pinnacle, but on his way, false accusation came. Dishonor came. He went to prison. And while he was in prison, Joseph honored the gift of God inside of him to interpret dreams. And he began to interpret the dream of others. 
before God would interpret his dream. There are people watching me that when they go to monthlypartners.com and they sow, they give, they honor the man of God. God sees it and he knows that there's coming a day when he's going to honor your dream. He's going to honor the anointing on you. That's how it works. That's how it works. If you do not honor the men and women of God, what movie was it? We can fly the plane. We don't need no stinking pilots. We can fly the plane. No, they can't fly the plane. That's what it looks like to God. When you dishonor the men and women of God, you think you can just run out there and do whatever you want to do just because somebody's got a talented band. <laughs> Bands are a dime a dozen. They come and go. You better honor the men and women of God that surround you because if you don't, there's consequences, lots of them. There's a plaque on my wall over here. It's small, it's red. Forget what year it is. It was handed that plaque at me to me from Nora Lamb for holding the largest banquet that she ever had. I think that was 1985. And she said it's the largest banquet she's ever had in the United States of America. And she said it was put together by a 17 year old on fire young man. She honored me because I honored her. I never talk about that thing. I don't look at it and say, wow, that was great. Yeah, I think about honor. I think about honor. I didn't get paid to help her. <laughs> I went to every church I could find, put up flyers, told everybody, announced it on radio, pumped it, pumped it, pumped it. I never get a holiday in at the airport in Portland, Oregon. There were so many people. The fire marshal came and told her that she had to close it down. If She said, this is a good problem. I think it was 900 people largest banquet she ever had i got so excited about it i i called up james robinson and told him I, I just put together a huge banquet for nora lamb i want to put together one for him they got so excited they said let's do it i'm 99 percent of the way through and they find out the tragic revelation they're working with a 17 year old boy and immediately they put two people on a jet plane from Fort Worth <laughs> pretty smart people actually but it was huge red line was the red line convention center was jammed to capacity honor Let me ask you a question. Who are you honoring? Who are you dishonoring? You need to honor the holy union of marriage. You may disagree with one another, but you honor that marriage is holy before God. I expect my children to honor me. I told my daughter the other day, I said, I heard a song being played. It was a love song. And uh, there have been days when I was younger, I wasn't so close to the Lord. And then there's days I was real on fire for God. You know how you do when you're a child, youngster. And it's interesting, it was the same song that I liked, kind of syrupy and worldly and not bad, just, just not Christian. My ears went up. The other side of the house, I heard that playing, and I thought, what? So I asked the Lord how to deal with this, and I, I got an answer. 
quietly, I pulled my daughter aside and I said, I heard you playing the other night. I said, it's just beautiful. I said, um, who gave you those hands? She said, I guess mom, dad. I said, no, God. I said, um, you see that beautiful, beautiful grand piano in there? You're playing on? She says, yeah. I said, who gave you that? Is this you? I said, no. My partners blessed me over the years to buy a junky piano. Then I bought a better piano. And then I bought a better piano. Where I have nearly a brand new, beautiful piano. And I said, God gave that to me. And I said, I I realize you don't always get celebrated among Christians. They've been called honky-tonk players. They've been called, ooh, I'm so shocked at how many church people have railed against my children for playing the piano. Classical worship is what it is. And she said, Dad, just the church doesn't want nothing to do with my piano playing. I said, that's not true. I said, just, I said, here's 10 fingers. Show me how many on 10 fingers I've told you. She said, maybe all of them. I said, maybe. I said, how many people around the world? I don't know. I said, there's a billion plus in China. I said, there's billions around the world. I said, don't let 10 lousy opinions bother you. And I said, God gave you those hands. He gave you the brain. He gave you that piano. I said, what you do when you're 21, 22, 23, 24 is between you and God. But while you're here with me, I don't want to hear syrupy love songs. I want to hear worship. Oh, but dad, I said, it's honoring me. It's honoring God. Pretty good. That's pretty good. She said, all right. You do not honor with words only, but also with your treasure. What's in your purse, what's in your pocketbook, what's in your wallet, what's in your hands? You sit down and play that piano. I want you to play it to God. I want you to love him, honor him. He gave you the vocal cords. He gave you the voice. He gave you the diaphragm. He gave you the fingers. He gave you the brain that's all connected. I want you to honor him. This is good tonight. Now, there's two ways to remain connected to your prophet. Number one, sowing into their life. And number two, listening to their words. I don't just prepare messages just because it's something to do. I really seek the Lord and I ask God, now, Father, there's a handful of people that are listening to me tonight Many will listen. Many will jump in the stream of broadcasting. They'll jump in and they'll jump out. But there's many who will come in and they'll steadily listen because they're connected to the prophetic flow. And if you honor God in your giving and in your listening, It's going to go well with you. When you receive the prophet and apply their instructions, Matthew 10 40 is very clear. You receive the prophet's reward. Some never thought about receiving the prophet's reward. They just say, I want a word. When you receive the prophet and apply their instructions to the parts of your life that need it to be applied, you receive the prophet's reward. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. Elders who 
are in the church and who perform their duties well, really good, the Bible says are doubly worthy of honor and financial support. First Timothy five seventeen. The elders who perform their duties and they do it as unto God, they do it right. The Bible says they're doubly worthy of honor. Doubly from what? Would you go figure that out? Doubly from what? Somebody said, well, I don't think it's right. The pastor shouldn't get paid more than anything the, the, the wealthiest person in this church should make. If the wealthiest person in this church makes $400,000, pastor shouldn't make over that. Well, that, let me see Matthew, 1 Timothy five seventeen. It says he's worthy of double. He's worthy of double. You better be very careful and tread on eggshells. Tread lightly. When you put your mouth up against a prosperity preacher, you're engulfed and inflamed in selfishness. You are engulfed and inflamed in pride. Pride comes before a fall. And I cannot tell you how many times I have seen people lose important things, precious things, special things, and even their own life because the scripture is very clear. Touch not mine anointed or do my prophets no harm. I know this isn't get up and jump, run around the building a few times, but, but you know what? This will save yourself from big trouble. Tell us what's on your mind by calling right now. Right now. one 701 4483. That's 1-888-701-4483. Call now. Telephone lines are open and I want to take your call tonight. Uh, one more one more point here before we go on to the phones. Give me a holler tonight and uh, tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what this means to you. Worship requires obedience and an offering. We see that in Matthew 2.11. The wise men were obedient to God when they came to worship Jesus. And part of their worship included presenting Jesus with gifts. It was their offer ring, their offer ring, their offering. God honored the wise men by sending them home a whole nother way to avoid death at the hand of King Herod. You see the exchange? Powerful. They honored baby Jesus with gifts. God honored them in their direction with safety. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac as an offering to worship God. And you see it in Genesis 22, 5. When Saul wanted to go see the man of God, you can read about this in 1 Samuel. In fact, I encourage you to do it tonight, 1 Samuel chapter 9. <clears throat> when Saul wanted to go see the man of God, he didn't go empty handed. He didn't do it, he wouldn't think of it. He was going to hear the word of God, and he had to make sure he honored the gift and the gift giver. We live in a culture today that is so far removed from the word honor. We don't honor anything. A lot of people don't honor God. They don't honor the program of God. They don't honor the gifts of the spirit, the anointing of the Lord, the church house. They don't honor prayer. They don't honor the tithe. They don't honor God with the tithe. They don't honor authority. 
and it does not move God because it's exactly what Jesus said would happen. Disobedient to parents. It's what the world's full of dishonor. Lord Jesus, there are many tonight that are watching and listening that got something out of this. And I thank you, Father, that we, be, we are careful to honor the right things and the right ones. And I thank you, Lord, that as I honor you, you've honored me. You've never left me high and dry. You've never abandoned me. You've always been there for me. And I thank you, Lord, that that will go for my brother and my sister's life tonight. But they're going to honor you with the first fruits, with the tithe, with an offering. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Open the phone lines. I want to take your call tonight. I have not even looked to see who is honoring what. Who's doing what tonight. Praise him. Praise him. I'm going to praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him. Praise him. I'm going to praise him when the sun goes down. Love him. Love him. I'm going to love him in the morning. Love him in the noontime. Love him. Love him. Love him when the sun goes down. Thank you, Pete from Michigan. Honoring the Lord with your substance. Thank you, Alice, for Myers, Florida. What a woman of God you are. God is going to honor you. He already has, I know. I'm so glad I got to connect with you. And the best is yet to come. Yvonne from Colorado, you're honoring the Lord tonight. Thank you. Little as much when God is in it. Don't ever think your offering is too small for God. Israel, I'm praying for you and your wife tonight from Olympia, Washington. You honored God over your marriage. You put God first. No doubt in my mind. God, I pray you honor him and his wife tonight on their anniversary. They honored you together with a special offering. And I pray right now, Lord, that you honor them. Show it in return. Let all the anointings that are in me and upon me be poured out upon them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stacy, you're honoring God tonight. Touch Stacy, Lord. Minister life to her situation, to everything that she touches. Blessing and honor, promotion come to her. Lady Veronica from Michigan, from Detroit, honoring the Lord little as much when God is in it. In Jesus' name, multiply the seeds sown. Father, touch Tammy from Iowa. Minister her seed right now. Increase it. Multiply it. Give her a miracle in her marriage that they honor the marriage as holy. They recognize the character defects, but they honor the holy marriage. Marriage is honorable to God. And we honor the marriage. Even though we have different character defects, even though we have different mistakes, there's three more. There's three more tonight. You're going to honor God. Oh, I thank you, Father. What we see is the man of God as the heavy word of the Lord comes. 
I thank you, Father, that we're going to honor you tonight in our giving, in this offering. Somebody's going to honor God, even though you felt pain. You're going to honor him anyways. Go right now to monthlypartners.com. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm going to pray over this offering that you're honoring God with. And a very fresh, fragrant anointing is going to come down over you, over this offering. And you're going to say, look at God. Somebody needs a promotion. Wait a minute. Somebody needs more hours, yet somebody else needs promotion. God said, honor me with the best and watch and see what I will do upon this honoring offering. Wow. Wow. Upon this honoring offering. That's what the Lord calls it. An honor offering. I want to hear from God. Specifically. Jesus, I feel the anointing right there. La, 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 la. Honor, glory, and power. Father, I thank you that they will be honored by men. Come on, get up. I'm waiting. I'm going to pray over it. Monthlypartners.com. Monthlypartners.com. There's somebody supposed to sow a $21 seed tonight. Representing the year 2021. You're going to sow a $21 seed. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody supposed to sow 2100 tonight. You're honoring the flow of a, no of a new anointing for 2021. Come on, obey God. Watch and see what the Lord will do. Watch and see the Lord, what he'll do tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Josh and Crystal from Oregon. Thank you for honoring the Lord. More than once you've honored the Lord. Not just through, through your money, but through your hands, through your feet, through your legs. Serving the prophet of God. You've honored the Lord. I've watched it over the years. Touch him right now, Lord. Bring increase. Bring the fire of God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm waiting for others. Give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Give the Lord the highest praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, get up off that chair. Honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your first fruits. Honor the Lord in your giving tonight and watch and see what the Lord will do his part. Hey, turn it up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Gonna give God the highest praise. 
We are now believing God for the end of this month. Our new budget total is $14,239 with those that have given tonight. Now, Father, I lift up, I pray over every gift, every seed. It's still too early, the Lord said. There are still people that are working it through. Okay, all right. I hear the Lord say, don't move too fast. He said, wait to pray. He said, I got other people I want in on this prayer. I want other, there's other people I want in on this prayer, the Lord said. Wow. Okay, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Monthlypartners.com or the Cash App. Dollar sign Sewing Woods. S O W I N G W O O D S. Come on. Honor God right now. Partake of what you're feeling night after night, what you're receiving. There are 48 scriptures dealing with honor. And I hear the Lord say, there are several of you need to sow a seed of $48 tonight. And you're going to begin to unlock honor towards you. New job schedule, new position, new promotion. And you're going to call me and you're going to tell me, man of God, I honored God with an unusual, uncommon offering of 48 and God changed my hours, or God gave me more hours, or God gave me a better position, or God gave me better clients. Something unusual is going to happen when you release an offering of 48 tonight. Come on, don't delay. You may have to go back to the drawing board, but don't delay. Don't put it off. I feel God on this. As I just delayed and prayed, there are 48 scriptures in the Bible dealing with the word honor. And I want God to start sending honor into your life. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Jesus, if you have to go back, go back. This is big to God. You're going to honor God. Just the fact that you're going to monthlypartners.com and sowing that $48 seed, you're going to show God. It's a signal to heaven. It's a signal to God. You're saying, God, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I know you're going to do for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Give the Lord the highest praise. We honor you tonight, Lord. We honor you. We will not make the mistake of dishonor, but we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, Lord. The seat of honor, a seat of 48. There it comes. There it comes. Now, Father, I lift up the prayer over those that are watching and listening to my voice tonight. I pray for those that need a miracle breakthrough. And I pray right now, Father, that as they've honored you, you're going to honor them. I speak breakthrough, promotion, increased, shifting positions. I hear that for somebody. Shifting positions, better hours in their favor favor to flow in Jesus name 
that as they honor God, God honors them. And I thank you, Lord, for doing it. And we believe that they receive it in Jesus' name. Lift your hands up and say, thank you, Father. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. Listen, I've gone way past my time, as usual. And we're going to, I guess, enjoy the look of the snow coming down. Think about you, how it's coming to you in Iowa, how it's coming to you in Michigan. <laughs> but I have had a great night tonight, and I'm glad you got the word of the Lord in your spirit. I can't wait to see what the Lord will do on this Sunday. Don't miss it. Media Church coming up Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock on Pacific time. Spread the word. Let people know. It'll come up on your YouTube and on their Facebook. You'll see it Sunday at 1 o'clock. I have a special word just for you. Don't miss it. You've been listening to Pray America Live with evangelist and radio pastor, David Woods. Join us online with David Woods' Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope channels for a refreshing time of one-on-one prayer, testimonies, and singing. David Woods Ministries is supported by the love gifts and free will love offerings of partners just like you. You can become a radio ministry partner by going to www.monthlypartners.com. 